That Soviet nuclear accident in the Ukraine created fallout today in Chicago. We do know that a zone of deadly radiation is being released from the damaged plant, and the accident is far from over. Nuclear power plant accident inside the Soviet Union. Increase in radiation levels around the plant up to three times the natural radiation levels. They assume they got a leak. Chernobyl accident is almost half a world away. Residents throughout the Northland are worried. Worried about the possible health effects from fallout. Worried about the safety of our own nuclear reactors. And worried about the possible economic consequences of the accident. On the 26th of April, 1986, an event took place that officially killed 31 people and left an unknown number of people affected for the rest of their lives. It rewrote the safety rules in nuclear energy and caused the 1,000 mile radius to be safely uninhabitable to humans for a few hundred years. It was the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, and in this video you will see that if it wasn't for three almost forgotten heroes, things could have been so much worse. First, let's go back to March 1970. Work begins on the construction of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant located near the city of Chernobyl and Pripyat in northern Ukraine. By 1983, four nuclear reactors are built, and between them, they are powering 10% of Ukraine's electricity. Fast forward to the early hours of the 26th of November 1986, 16 years after the plant's commission, and workers at the nuclear plant are carrying out a test on reactor number 4. There are many inaccuracies and thoughts that the test violated several safety regulations, and this combined with the flawed design in the reactors used at Chernobyl caused a sudden power surge and an emergency shutdown was implemented. This failed, and as the workers could feel the ground trembling beneath them, they knew something bad was coming. Seconds later, an explosion occurs, followed by a second, more powerful explosion that blasts the 12-ton cover off of the reactor into the air, releasing deadly radioactive vapour and a spray of colourful bright fire 1,000 metres into the sky. The alarms were activated, and the first on the scene were firemen. It said they had no idea what they were dealing with, but knew the risks of the radiation, and if they had followed regulations, they would have never gone near the reactor, but had no choice. They tackled the blades without any protective gear, exposing themselves to deadly radiation, and despite their efforts, the fire could not be brought under control. Two men died that day. The night shift main circulating pump operator, who was most likely killed immediately as his body was never discovered, and the automatic systems adjuster who was found unconscious in room 604 pinned under a fallen beam and was contaminated by radioactive water. To show how much radiation this man had been exposed to, one of the power plant workers suffered a radiation burn on his back, where this man's hand was located when he helped carry him out. There is an unconfirmed story that shortly after the explosion, many locals gathered on a railway bridge that had a good view of the nuclear plant to witness the colourful flames coming from the reactor. They had no idea that in the air was a lethal dose of radiation, apparently no one survived and the bridge is now referred to as the Bridge of Death. Like I said, this is unconfirmed, but the bridge does exist and if people were stood there for long enough, there is no denying they would have been exposed to deadly amounts of radiation. Tales aside, in the days that followed the explosion, the authorities were slow to react and acknowledge the dangers posed by this accident. They were in fact in denial that any radiation was leaking out and told higher class officials who were ringing and wondering what had happened, that everything was under control and that the radiation levels were maxing out on their meters, but the max out limit that these meters were capable of showing was nothing worth evacuating the area for. Of course, in reality, the level of radiation in the area was above and beyond anything their meters could read, and radiation levels were astronomically high. In the nearby town of Pripyat, the people were told that it was a fire at the power plant and that they had nothing to worry about, so life carried on as normal, Children went to school and residents went to work, completely oblivious to the invisible lethal radiation they were being exposed to. The levels were 15,000 times higher than usual and rising. It took 30 hours before the Pripyat residents were ordered to evacuate. An 18 mile area around the power plant was closed and residents were given two hours notice to gather their belongings and get out. They were told they'd be returning in a few days, but this never happened. Around 43,000 people who once called Pripyat their home were now known as the first atomic refugees, a title they never imagined being given. The only people left in the area was one old man who refused to evacuate and was found dead in his home just a few weeks later, and the military and scientific delegates who were tasked with getting the still-burning reactor under control. They were living unprotected in the local hotel, seemingly unaware of the dangers posed to them from the extremely high levels of radiation. In the days after the explosion, clouds of radioactive matter were being blown north, drifting over Russia and reaching as far as Sweden. 
Despite radioactive dust raining down on Stockholm, there was still no official report outside of the Soviet Union. It took three days for the rest of the world to know, and this coincided with the report that a US spy satellite had spotted the wreckage of the burning Chernobyl plant. By now, the whole of Europe was at risk of contamination. The plant was still burning, and something had to be done urgently to put out the fire and seal reactor number four to prevent any more radiation from spewing out. Pilots were brought in to fly helicopters above the reactor and dropped thousands of tons of sand, clay, and neutron absorbing boron onto the blaze in an attempt to smother the flames and neutralize the radiation. Many soldiers would pour the sand in from sacks whilst hovering directly above the reactor. A week later, although the flames were brought somewhat under control, the heat had not, and it was causing the base of the reactor to crack. The workers knew that below the reactor was a water reservoir and also a basement that would have been filled with water from the firefighters' water hoses. If the radioactive magma made contact with the pool of water underneath, this would have caused a massive steam explosion, throwing out more radioactive material from the reactor into the air. Therefore, it was absolutely necessary to drain this water. By doing so, another explosion could be prevented, and the area below the reactor could then be filled with liquid nitrogen to cool it. Three plant workers who knew where the valves were that would allow the water to drain volunteered to go down there. These brave men went underneath with what turned out to be a faulty lamp to locate the valves in complete darkness and swam through highly radioactive water. They opened the valves and returned back, but sadly all died shortly after from the radiation, something they knew would happen as a result of their heroic feat. With the water drained, the authorities called on the help of 10,000 miners, with the aim of tunneling underneath the reactor to cool the base down and stop it from melting through the ground by pumping in liquid nitrogen. There is some doubt as to whether this operation was completed, because I have found conflicting reports, but eventually it seems the liquid nitrogen was stopped and the area beneath the reactor was filled with concrete. Whatever happened, those three men prevented another explosion, and if they hadn't have, you probably wouldn't be listening to me right now, as the explosion would have been so catastrophic, it would have put the whole of Europe at risk. With the area somewhat under control and the threat of another explosion eliminated, workers set about sealing up the reactor in order to minimize the spread of radiation. A massive structure was designed and it became known as Project Sarcophagus. It covered the exploded reactor and was completed by December 1986, eight months after the disaster. There is thought to be around 800,000 people who risked their lives in 1986 in an attempt to contain and clean up the Chernobyl disaster site. Many of these heroic people received medals for their work and 28 died as a result of acute radiation sickness in the weeks after initial exposure. With this, the long-term effects of the millions of other people exposed is unclear, and there is no definitive figure on how many people now suffer long-term health problems, have died prematurely, or how many people have given birth to defected children. But it's thought thousands of extra cancer deaths have been directly caused by the accident, although officials are still reluctant to associate these deaths to the Chernobyl disaster. The effects of the disaster are still very real to this day. The exclusion zone covers an area of 1,000 miles around the power plant, and although many live in this area at their own risk, mainly workers, Pripyat and many other areas close to the reactor are ghost towns. Nobody ever returned to live there, and the haunted images show how lives must have been shattered that day. One astonishing thing about the area surrounding the Chernobyl plant, though, is the abundant wildlife. Despite the area still being contaminated, many animals who were disappearing from the area around the power plant prior to the accident have thrived, and studies have shown that deer, elk, wolves, and wild boar seem relatively unaffected by the contaminated land. These findings contradict original thoughts that the disaster would have a detrimental and devastating effect on the local wildlife, creating deformed alien-like radioactive creatures, but they all seem to be living happily in the environment, although some animals have had a rise in deformities and the invertebrate population has decreased, but nowhere near like experts had predicted. The Chernobyl disaster initially took the lives of two workers, followed by 29 people later from radiation-related deaths and four men from a helicopter that crashed trying to contain the fire at the plant. In total, the Chernobyl accident cost the Soviet Union the equivalent of 200 billion pounds and drove millions from their homes, making it the biggest nuclear disaster in history and we can all only hope that it will stay that way forever. I never really knew the full extent of this disaster before heavily researching it, and I've realized how devastating it must have been for those involved. I hope I have shone some light on the build-up, the event, and the aftermath, and also those three men who prevented something much, much worse from taking place. I hope you've enjoyed this video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.